What's up, my name is Galono, and while sifting through the filing cabinets inside of my brain, I was looking for a new video idea to make and put out on the channel. Though I made a strong effort, I had hit a wall. That was until I remembered, oh yeah, this is a game. So today, join me as we take a look at some forgotten easter eggs from the one and only Left 4 Dead 2. Now, if you're new to forgotten easter eggs, I show easter eggs in games that you either have never heard of, or some that you haven't heard from in a long time. So without further ado, let's get started. First, let's go take a look at Dead Center Chapter 2. For our first easter egg, though minor, if you take a walk outside of the safe room, you will see a few vehicles with the letters C-E-D-A written on them. If you walk up to either one, and look next to those letters, you'll see the words Disease, Emergency, Assessment, Dispatch, which when abbreviated, spells dead. Now from here, take a walk to the main section of this chapter, where you talk to the gun shop owner named Whitaker. From here, you're going to be tasked with getting Whitaker some cola from the nearby convenience store. Here, you will recognize the familiar nature of the store logo, having a large 4 with some dots to the left of it, similar to the Left 4 Dead logo, which also has some dots to the left of it. Now, after giving Whitaker his cola, he will aid you by blasting open the roadblock with a rocket launcher before going back into hiding. Although what some may not know, including myself, is that you can actually see Whitaker while he does this. If you go to a specific spot after delivering the cola, you can watch as Whitaker opens the door, fires the rocket, and closes the door followed by his character model disappearing inside of the building. Now finish up this chapter because we are heading to chapter 3 with a very strange easter egg I never knew about until writing this script. While exploring throughout the mall, amongst all of the zombies you may notice some mannequins that are randomly placed throughout the building. Of course, everyone's first instinct on contact is to immediately shoot the thing, but what you may not notice is that sometimes when you do damage to the mannequin, your character will begin laughing. <laughs> Finally, to wrap up Dead Center, while walking throughout the mall, you will sometimes notice signs with imagery of the racing legend Jimmy Gibbs Jr. This sign specifically implies that he will also be making an appearance at the mall you reside at currently. Well, when reaching the final chapter of Dead Center, you will be tasked with pouring gasoline into his car with the intention of escaping. But you will notice there is a severe lack of Jimmy Gibbs Jr. Well, on very rare occasions when playing in this section, you may encounter what looks to be the zombified version of the racing legend. Though he may seem like a normal zombie, surprisingly this variant is given benefits found in other uncommons, such as being fireproof, having 3000 HP, and even not being drawn to pipe or bile bombs to name a few. So with that, let's get on to our next easter egg. Heading on over to the campaign titled The Passing, select chapter 2 and exit the safe room. Proceed throughout the map as normal until you reach the pool hall. In here, aside from the assortment of pool tables and weaponry, you will notice a jukebox hanging out in the corner of the room. Pressing the key you have bound to use on the jukebox, you can sort through various songs that have secrets of their own, like Your Brains, which, once reaching the chorus, a horde will spawn, and Save Me Some Sugar, having a portion of the song played in reverse, which when played backwards, says Bill is dead. While these are interesting on their own, you may find it nice to hear that on occasion, you can play the classic song from Portal 1's end credits, Still Alive. While we are still in this section of the map, if you continue forward and head towards this section, there's a chance for an interesting easter egg to appear, that being a quick drive-by of the tour bus owned by the Midnight Riders, a hard rock band in the Left 4 Dead universe. Now speaking of the Midnight Riders, our next set of easter eggs take place within the campaign Dark Carnival, which just so happens to end with us rocking out on the same stage the Midnight Riders were meant to play on. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's take a look at Chapter 2, The Fairground. Once you arrive, you'll be outside of what I would consider the most well-known portion of Left 4 Dead 2, which holds what I would consider the most well-known easter egg of Left 4 Dead 2, which is straight ahead from the entrance. But before we reach our destination, if you take a look at some of the piles of garbage, you'll notice a few familiar faces. That of the pyro on a burger box, and the heavy on a soda cup. 
But anyways, this carnival game right over here, titled Peanut Gallery, encourages you to shoot everything that isn't a peanut, since the peanuts will lose you 100 points as shown by the sign to the right of it. As you notice, a score will begin racking up as soon as you shoot the bad guys. If you look to the left, you will see a little box housing a garden gnome, requiring you to reach 750 points in order to take him. Now, this is part of an achievement called Garden Gnome, where if you take this little guy all the way to the end of the campaign, you will unlock it for rescuing him. Now, this alone isn't an easter egg in my opinion, but you may not know that it is referencing a similar instance in another game, Half-Life 2 Episode 2, where if you take a gnome from the first map, Outland 1, to the rocket in Outland 11, you can place him inside of a rocket and get a similar achievement. Taking a trip to the final section of this campaign, select either Ellis or Coach and head to the stage area to set the lighting. Before starting the concert, if you walk up to the microphone, you'll notice all of your voice lines will sound as if you're actually speaking into a mic, adding an echo to them. Nah, no. nah, no, man, nope, nah, no, man. As well as having your voice lines echo, specifically Ellis and Coach will have a chance to start singing songs from the Midnight Riders catalog. Gotta reach for the top, stay on the mountain. Ever late is crazy when a dad is not around. Gotta reach for the top, stay on the mountain. Dun -na 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 -na. Every late is crazy when a dad is not around. Dun -na 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 -na. While we're on the topic of voice lines, let's take a break looking through the map list and check out some voice line specific easter eggs. When passing by steam pipes, Zoe and Francis will have a chance to reference, well, steam. Man, I love steam. Yeah, steam's alright, I guess. Oh yeah, I love steam. I just hate the pipes. I hate steam. Pipes. Ellis and Lewis, on the other hand, have voice lines that reference video games like TF2, Counter-Strike, and Half-Life. Dude, this is just like Team Fortress 2. Man, I'm gonna beat these sons of bitches till I lose my watch. One thing video games have taught me, good shit always comes in vents. Man, I feel like I'm Gordon Freeman. Oh man, this is just like Counter-Strike. And finally, when in the mall, Nick has a chance to say this voice line that may or may not be referencing a popular spy voice line from TF2. If anybody sees a men's store, let me know. I got blood on my suit. Though I have only shown you a few voice line references, there are plenty more that exist in the game. The ones I had chosen were video game specific, while the others reference different forms of media that I figured wouldn't be very relevant. So let's move on. Heading on over to Swamp Fever Chapter 1, there is a potential reference to Half-Life that can be found while progressing through this section. Once you reach the area where you call a ferry, you will notice a strung up charger that looks very similar to a Lambda. Although I'm not completely sure if this is a reference or not, it is widely believed that it is, so I might as well include it regardless. Our next few easter eggs reside in No Mercy, specifically in the apartments and the subway. Instead of spending too much time at the supply area, quickly head down the stairs and clear out the kitchen. First thing you should do is head to this table right here before continuing throughout the rest of the map. On the table, you'll see two things, one being the terminal newspaper notoriously found in Half-Life 2 even having an image of Wallace Breen. And right next to it, you'll see a cereal box decked out with Team Fortress 2 imagery, implying there is an action figure of one of the mercenaries inside. Strangely, the text below says collect all 10, when there are only 9 classes. If you have any info about what the 10th action figure could be, let me know down below. Now heading to the subway, you're going to want to progress throughout the beginning until you reach this spot next to the fallen over train. On the wall beside it, you should see a poster advertising Orange Box Juice, which is a reference to the Orange Box, which of course was a bundle consisting of TF2, Portal, and Half-Life 2. Wrapping things up with our final couple of maps, let's take a look at Death Toll Chapter 3. What you're going to want to do is travel all the way over to the end of this section. Actually, Maybe you won't want to do that, so let me do it for you. But once you arrive here, you'll see a bunch of writing all over the walls, which just so happens to include the names of all of the Left 4 Dead developers, with each of their death dates being 2009, the year the game takes place. Now, let's head over to the final chapter of this campaign, Boathouse Finale. After taking the time to progress throughout the map, you will eventually reach this house where you will need to answer a radio to call for backup. 
After fighting a long wave of zombies, your help will arrive in the form of a boat named St. Lydia II. Now, funnily enough, if you go back to the campaign, The Sacrifice Chapter 2, and progress all the way up to this building, you will see a boat behind it floating in the water, seemingly crashed. You may see where this is going, but if you head over to the other side of the boat, you will see a familiar name, St. Lydia II. Now, this may not be an easter egg and instead just a reused model, because there is another St. Lydia boat right next to it, but it is still funny to imagine the boat that was used to rescue the crew had crashed at some point after the rescue. Now for our final three easter eggs, checking out the most recent addition to Left 4 Dead 2, Last Stand. First, you're going to want to go to the first chapter and progress until you reach this house. At first glance, there isn't anything special aside from a few items here and there, that is until you reach the back of the house and hit this door with your melee weapon. You may hear the sound changes from the default wall hit sound to a breakaway wall hit sound. Continue hitting this door until it'll eventually give way and break, revealing the secrets hidden inside. A deceased map maker in front of a computer showing that the map tool, Hammer, has crashed alongside dev credits on the walls. Heading to the second part of Last Stand, walk towards the watchtower relatively near the safe house. Walk up the first set of stairs, and you will see a small board with the words, We Don't Go to the Lighthouse, a reference to the phrase, We Don't Go to Ravenholm from Half-Life 2. Wrapping things up, while we are here, let's take a look at good old Francis. This easter egg was one I found quite interesting, so I figured let's go out with a good one, and one you might not know. If you take a look at Francis, he obviously has a lot of tattoos, with one specifically being this circle with skulls and arrows. Obviously, this tattoo looks pretty cool. So cool, in fact, that one of his fellow survivors happened to be wearing some merchandise with the same design. Going to any map featuring the Left 4 Dead 2 crew, zooming in on Nick's hand, you will notice a familiar design on one of his rings. Now, that'll do it for today's video. If you enjoyed, please make sure to like and subscribe. I'm almost at 4,000 subscribers, and I'm endlessly grateful for each and every one of you for supporting the channel. So, with that, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Now, I couldn't forget to thank our amazing channel members for supporting me and my terrible upload schedule. And another thank you to Anita Cube and Floofy Gooberzak for both purchasing the Glono Consumer Membership Tier.